You should have the ebook as well as the printed version. And I'll explain to you why you need both. So, first off, Rajivji, I've done some serious reading. You can see I've got a bunch of questions here. I concentrated on one chapter, um, which I'll come to, you know what more questions are. But more importantly, you've been on a whirlwind tour of the world. And you have, what, 100 and 100 plus? 130 events in 50 days. Yeah, 130 events in 50 days. So you're doing three events in a day some yeah. days. Uh, India, Canada, and now United States. And now, after this, you go to Southern California. And Seattle, and Southern California, the East Coast, New York, New Jersey, and North Carolina, Atlanta, on. You are a man on a mission. And, and I have read many of your books. I haven't read all of your books. I've read many of your books. In my opinion, this goes in the top one. Uh, might turn out to be a magnum opus. Uh, I'll leave, uh, leave it for the viewers to decide that because you cannot not have this book. Let me put it that way. You cannot not have this book. And that's why I'm saying you also need to have the ebook because every question that you may have about Sanatana Dharma, about the caste system, about wokeism, about how things are being planned. So this is sort of like breaking in year 2.0 adjusted for the last last 10 years. Yes. Can I say that? Yes, yes. And this will this is predicting what you are going to face, what you are currently facing and what else you're going to face in this decade. Absolutely. And I'm sorry if I think they're getting worse. And yes. things are getting more challenging and it is not a conspiracy theory. I want people to get out of their comfort zone and be honest. And if they don't want to do anything about it, it's okay. But at least you should know what's going to happen and what is already happening. Um, Rajiv when we were talking about it, like a few week, a week ago, you were saying that, you know, the book looks big, but you will get the gist of what each chapter is about in the first few pages. And you're spot on on that one. And uh, I... I would say, read the introduction, 40 pages, and the for, first page or two of every chapter is called Overview. It's called Overview for a reason, because it summarizes the main points in the book, in that chapter. So you read it, in less than 100 pages you will know everything you need to know about the book except for the evidence, the backup arguments. So, you know, it's like if you're a lawyer developing a case, you have Appendix 1 testimony, Appendix 2 forensic report, you put all of that and that most of the bulk is that. But your argument is very cogent, very straightforward. The advantage of putting it in one book is that after reading this introduction and all the overview of each chapter, whenever you want to go for a deep dive, it's there, yes. it's right there. And you don't have to go for a deep dive in any sequence. You don't have to read all the chapters. You can go straight to chapter 4, you can go straight to chapter 19, wherever your interest takes you. And the other thing, the reason is uh, for keeping all this together, is that if you were to get into an argument with somebody, and this gives you, it's like a little toolkit. Yes. Giving you arguments, yes. giving you counter arguments, telling you how to diagnose what somebody is saying, why they are saying it, what's the backstory, and how to counter argue. So, when you get into that, if you need help because they are trying to push back, you can go and read that particular chapter and give you all the backup right there. And so this is why we put a big book today. So I'll tell you why you need the ebook. Let's say you are on a panel on television, Republic TV, Arnab Goswami is posting it. Whenever he gives you a chance to speak, you have to have your say. So having the ebook helps a lot because then you can not only quote from the book, you can also say where the quotation is based on, the research, everything is right there. That is how you make a point. You just don't say, I heard it somewhere. That doesn't clinch the argument. You say, I, I read it in this book and this is the quote, the reference for that. And that is what you've done. Yes. My it's God. a lot of hard work. Yes, it then it, it will have a life for 10 years or more. Absolutely. Like the previous books. Yes, yes. I'm sorry if I'm rushing, guys, but... I know how much work it takes to put something, uh, put something like this together. Being a writer myself, I had hats off to you. So I don't know how long did it take to write this book. Well, two years for the really intense, mm -hmm. but it's been an ongoing effort for. You're gathering a lot of research. Yes. Yeah, I can understand. Yes, you're gathering a lot of research. Yes. And the other thing I want people to know is there are 1,600 references in the end mm -hmm. and a hundred-page bibliography. So obviously, we have backed up everything very substantially. Now. The other side that we are critiquing, I have already started taking down some of those videos mm -hmm. and, and deleting some of the websites. Of course. But it's too late for them because we have captured everything. We have downloaded all the videos that we are quoting. 
and we have put them on the cloud. So if they say, well, I don't remember having said it, we can prove it. <laughs> and, and if they if they delete the website, we've got screenshots. So, and so we want to put all that in a in a website. So if you enter the uh, the uh, uh, reference number, the end node number, whatever the end node number is, uh, it will pop up what it's at, where it's from. So we have the proof, like a lawyer going to court will keep a proof so that if the evidence disappears, he will say, ah, ah I got it. <laughs> also, uh, I'd like to uh, introduce. Uh, Vijaya Vishwanathan, who is the co-author of this book, she's not here today. Uh, Rajaji, tell us a little bit about how you two collaborated on this book. Well, you know, Vijaya is a very important person in this collaboration and in many other things we're doing together. She's by far the most intelligent person I have worked with. I have to tell you that. She's very smart, very articulate. I'm shocked. Uh -huh. Because we haven't worked together, so I still have a chance. So, so you know, but she, she is intuitive, she picks up the big idea. She pushes me back and says, okay, now people might think this or that, so I, got, I also know that I am a built-in critic. And we are we are very close in the sense we push each other back. She gives me a lot of stuff and I say, no, no, I don't buy this. What about this? What about that? Then she puts it more to, you know, differently together and then she does the same to me. So we work as a team very nicely together and I'm very glad that I have her as a partner because I collaborated with many people in the past. They did not make good partners, many of them. Uh, they would write a book with me, it's a free ride for them, and, and then they would not put in their part of it to pack it and to market it and stick their neck out. I must say, of the three uh, co-authors I've had, each one is better than the previous ones, and she's by far the best. Very, very wonderful uh, stuff to say, and Vijayaji, I hope you're listening, and. Uh, uh, we are missing you here. I would have loved to have you also as part of this conversation. Uh, but I think uh, we'll have to make do with the Rajivji's wisdom. Uh, Rajivji, uh, see, one of the things that we talked about before uh, the last time we talked was that Howard is now taking direct aim at the IITC. Are they feeling threatened? Well, you know, 15 years ago, you didn't have a whole lot of brown skin guys running Silicon Valley. Yes. Okay. And it was Harvard's, they were the producers preserve, of a, yeah. a preserve, producing the leadership of the world, training everything from government people, people in NGOs, people running think tanks, universities and corporate. So now all of a sudden the corporate leadership is threatened because IITs are supplying more leaders in Bay Area, Silicon Valley than Harvard. So obviously it must be matter of concern that these guys are coming from somewhere, a lot of them taking our jobs, a lot of them becoming very important and they got these Hindu names and they are, they, you know, they are, so there must be jealous, there is jealousy. And what better way than get a bunch of Indians to fight the Indian system. That's what they've succeeded in doing because they have clout, Harvard can attract anybody in the world to their point of view to work for them because nobody wants to turn down an offer from Harvard. So that's what's happened. Now, um, one of the challenges that uh, Rajivji has faced here is to try and bring together a group of successful IITians to kind of lay down the roadmap for them, you know, play this thing out a few years down the road. What do you think is going to happen? I, meaning Rajiv, being there from what, 25 years now? 30 years. 30 years. He has seen this thing. Like we said, this is breaking India 2.0 because the other side has changed their game playbook and we are also adapting to the same thing, we are also changing our playbook and the point here is yes, in your own cocoon, in your own ecosystem you have done very successfully, uh, good luck to you and congratulations, but there is certain thing about giving back to the society. I mean, Bharat Mata is what made you what you are today. We cannot walk away from that because most of you are born there and you came here for higher study. I am just trying to generalize this, uh, what has been your experience reaching out to the IITs? So first I want to tell the people who may not know why, what the IIT problem is, what is the attack on IIT and then I'll tell you my attempts to defend and give a counter and uh, the lack of response from the IIT. So the attack on IIT starts with a book by Ajanta Subramanian, uh, herself an Indian, a Brahmin, uh, a professor at Harvard 
And the book is published by Harvard University Press, which is the most prestigious press in the world. So there's nothing more legitimate than that in the eyes of the academy. And in that book, the core thesis is that IIT is structurally biased against Dalits and minorities. It is a Brahmanical system. Merit is a sham. The word merit is not genuine merit. It's just a way to cover up bias and basically privilege that the Brahmins have. It's a caste privilege which is masquerading as merit. Now that's a pretty serious allegation. And so this, and she gives the whole theory and the history. Of course, it started with Nehru's era. It's not, it's, the problems started much before the current government. And she goes into history how the British wanted to uh, bring the Brahmins in and Brahmins sold out to the British. And so this whole area, and then, and then the true, uh, the true workers of India who were the tech workers uh, were, the, were the Shudras, but they worked with their hands and the Brahmins didn't want to work with their hands. So the IITs turned it into a theoretical focus in order to let the Brahmins supersede the Dalits because the Brahmins were not good at their hands and had they done engineering with hands on the way it should be done, then, then the Brahmins would not have done well, the Dalits would have done well. So you come up with all the answers. Now, I interviewed three IIT professors and there's a, there's a nice video of 45, 50 minutes. I mean, you must have seen that. Yes, I've seen that. And they give a point by point report of that. This is all nonsense. She's never been to one of these IIT. She doesn't know how an IIT works. She doesn't have any tech background. IIT is a very rigorous place. The testing, how people get in, and then what they have to go through to become an engineer is pretty rigorous. So, but the point is that Harvard name sells. You don't have to have an argument based on fact. You don't need to prove a thesis. Like I have to prove my thesis. Because I'm not a Harvard name, I have, to, I have the burden of proof. She doesn't have the burden of proof. There's no data, there's no statistics, it's a bunch of anecdotal uh, stories. Mostly somebody's first name, she just says, so and so said this, and so and make a big story for several pages, very emotional that you know, he was, he didn't get room, he didn't get really properly in the dining room, whatever, some kind of BS. So this has sold, it has become established as fact. And this uh, attack on IITs has become part of their curriculum. And now, uh, you know, uh, Sundara Rajan, who runs this equality labs, has turned this into legal action. Yes. So they brought it to Silicon Valley. They're weaponizing it. They're weaponizing it. So now they're saying, okay, now, now that it's proven fact, okay, all this is proven fact. And they got another person from Harvard Kennedy School called uh, uh, this uh, Sura Yenge, who says he's an afro -Dalit. Uh, he's a Dalit, but he's a black, and Dalits are blacks, and non-Dalits are whites. So all this theory has come right here in the Bay Area, and this is ground zero for this attack. But now there are echoes elsewhere. So uh, I'm I'm getting emails from people in Microsoft, from people in Facebook, telling me that hey, listen, we are being subject to all these workshops, that these people are conducting workshops for caste sensitivity, but these workshops are very biased. And they're embarrassing to us. We have, we have to sit in a, in a room with our white colleagues and we've been told all kind of junk about our history, how bad we are, how oppressive we are, and we have done anything wrong. So this is a this is a situation that is happening. The ramifications of this are people are going to be uh, there are going to be more caste surveys, there's a call for caste surveys. And this is it reached the HR departments of all big companies, not only in the Bay Area but everywhere. And a lot of uh, governments, county governments, state governments universities are enacting laws uh, making casteism as a crime like racism uh, you know and so somebody just has to accuse you of a caste bias and you're dragged into court and yes. prosecuted yes. and you have to defend yourself on the laws that were set up for racism so this is a very so people should understand that the problem is a very serious problem now the reason it's getting worse is they're now lobbying that uh, there should be uh, court, the caste census for people applying for H1B visa. Mm -hmm. So when you go to the US Embassy in Delhi in application, they're also be they're lobbying that there should be caste question. And they should make sure that not too many people of some caste and lift up the people of certain caste. So it will not be a meritocracy. You have mediocrity because people will be judged based on identity. And identity politics entering tech world in India is going to be bad. So once this has been corporatized, say in a Microsoft or something in the United States, then it's going to go to... The template will be played out in all the places. And there's subsidies in India. So then the hiring in India will be based on this. 
and they're not only their subsidiaries but all the outsourcing all the companies that do TCS that are outsourcing well the TCS has to come up with this now the person in charge of this in these big companies is the DEI officer diversity equity and inclusion these people in the name of helping blacks and Hispanics are now going to also be weaponized to to help the Dalits and keep an eye on the Brahmins so if you are a non-Dalit you will be a suspect if you are a Hindu you will have to prove your innocence otherwise you will be guilty this is very serious stuff so now to your question I have taken this to the IITs and they are sitting happy in their comfort zone I'm talking about the very senior ones the people who made their money and they, some of them say it's not their problem somebody should worry about it some of them are saying you know maybe it's true some of them are saying yeah, maybe it is true I don't know they don't want to bother with it they don't want to ruffle any feathers stick their neck out they, they don't want to get into any controversy and so they wish that I weren't raising it but you know I'm really sad by the, by the fact that a non-IIT guy like me is taking putting everything I got on the line and I've been doing these patterns for 30 years and the people who should be fighting are not only not fighting they're not even helping there is zero help so far on the table some people have talked about it but they haven't produced one one penny worth of actual concrete help to help me out in, in this battle and there are so many things they could do now the junior ones IIT and engineering people in general I don't fault them because they have a right they have a job they don't want to risk it so they, they keep saying look privately to help you actually I'm getting more help from them privately than from the senior people but, so for purely selfish reasons some of you who are now running your own companies this is not something that we are making up it's going to come to your office your DEI when you become a 100 person organization 500 person organization your own DEI is going to come and be you will be facing the same challenges now if you are a startup where meritocracy is everything startup is idea and then execution and it's a maniacal execution that takes you to the pinnacle can I say that? Yes, 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 yes. So, in those situations, are you going to cons be concerned about where do I go next or are you going to be concerned about I have to have this sensitivity training, if somebody didn't deliver, I'm going to, you know, I can't really take it out on him or, you know, professionally tell him or give him a dressing down. I mean, I have been to start, I've worked, I've been a startup in all of my life. I mean, expertise is where it begins Let me yeah startup is a tough man it's, yeah. a, it's, a, it's not an easy thing i always tell my people i've been in that i'm that kind of a boss yeah. i've been managed that way and i manage other people that is no nonsense because you are in a rough world yes i mean if you are playing you know a game like you're playing uh, nfl football you cannot be a simple easy guy and you don't want to take a rough stand because others will trouble you you are in a certain kurukshetra and you got to play by the rules of the game yeah. so the reason the reason the United States is going to be in trouble is that this wokeism right. is creating mediocrity. Right. And, but China is not getting into this wokeism. Yes. China is to be pointing out with this woke. China has is helping the export of wokeism to America and India because they think it will weaken them. Like you know, uh, the old days uh, opium trade would weaken a society. So this is their revenge. Uh, they are sending wokeism and they are doing things in places like Harvard to uh, actually promote wokeism in India type of places. But they have blocked such things from entering their country. Right. They have discontinued collaborations with American Ivy Leagues in areas of humanities and social sciences. They want STEM. They want STEM education so that they're bringing in knowledge which bank borrows steel, new technology which they can benefit from, which is smart of them. But they don't want to talk about the, the, if they're giving grants, which they are to places like Harvard, they don't want anything to talk about the Tibet issue or the Uyghurs or the freedom in Hong Kong or social justice or what's the politics or democracy they are saying Harvard is none of your business you should not talk about our these kind of matters let's talk only technology and yet Xi Jinping's daughter goes to Harvard games that are not yes, sir. Yes, sir. so you see the thing is the the uh, Indian billionaires that's the other part of the story one is the IITs refusal to help me so far some are talking and I hope they come through but nobody has actually come through uh, the other big story is Indian billionaires like the Mahindras and the Lakshmi Mittal and the Piramal and Bajaj and Tatas and you know all of these guys 
funding places like Harvard, which are churning out the wokeism for India. Churning out wokeism as a weapon against India, human rights, social justice, the same sort of thing that when it hits the Washington Post and some US foreign policy statement comes that you don't have proper democracy. I mean, imagine the United States saying you don't have proper democracy given right. what the US is going through. Uh, and you've written, of course, about it. So all this lecturing and wagging the finger, and then Jay Shankar has to go and rebuttal it. But why aren't we going to the source and saying, okay, now let's see where these snakes are born and bred. Who is creating all this poison that the snakes are spreading? So uh, that's what this book is doing. Going to the source where the poison is being created and the snakes are being nurtured. And from there, the snakes spread all over the world. And then at the end of the day, Jay Shankar has to fight these snakes. Now, let's be... Um Let's, let's give a you know, three point thing for the IITs. Some of you are very successful. We're not against you. We are for you. We are with you. We want to help you because we all have children who are going to be facing this in one form or the other. Rajiti, you need these successful IITs to help you. Maybe if you can say three ways they can help you. It doesn't have to be public. So, you know, so the thing is this Vijay and I want to turn want to turn this book into five small books so each hundred pages more marketable the big book is a reference book and a toolkit for everybody and then the little books will be spread like wildfire we can make lots of copies and get funding from some IITians to market them and give them away also so for instance one book will be on the battle for IITs that will be a book which will be a 100 page book, most of the material in this book, some new material, some additional material, some case studies, you know, like tomorrow I'm meeting a gentleman who doesn't want to be named, he's in this Bay Area and he's being sued by this wokeism or allegations and he, with his lawyer. So he's not allowed to speak and I want to protect him, yeah. I won't disclose anything, but or his name or content or anything like that, but the point is that they, they're interested in giving me the story. So this is going on. So we are we are going to create, make a hundred page book, protect the anonymity wherever it calls for. Uh, and then there's another hundred page book which is on what should be the Hindu talking points of when caste comes up. You see, whenever there's a hearing somewhere, uh, Hindus go also to go and uh, give rebuttals. But if we don't have the same backing that the people who are against us do, because they have all these academic people who come up with a bit of a case against us. On past. And so when they go, they go with all kind of claims and backup and all that. But our backup and our case is actually stronger, but we just don't have it together. So in this book, chapter six is a hundred page, hundred page review of the history of Varna, Jati, caste, starting with Vedas and then the Itihas, then the Dharma Shastras, the Arthashastras, Shastras, all the different Shastras, then the Buddhist era, then the Muslim era, then the British uh, European era, then the post independence era. It talks about both textual references on this matter and physical evidence from the ground. A lot of physical evidence from the ground, like there was a Shudra dynasty, the Shudra is not always poor. There's a lot of uh, situations where Kshatriyas who lost became classified as the lower caste. Uh, so uh, the, the, the fluidity and the dynamics has to be captured and also regional differences. So it's not like a frozen system where you can go and blame the uh, Vedas for everything and say, okay, we've got to dismantle the Vedas. Because what the opposition is trying to claim is that uh, all social injustice starts with caste system. Caste system is permanent and the caste system is a necessary and sufficient condition to be a Hindu, which is not true, it's neither necessary nor sufficient. We prove that. And therefore, to bring social justice, we have to dismantle the whole native structure. Now that, of course, is not acceptable. So, that's another hundred page book. So like this, we got five, six books and we'd like to be sponsored. And we would like uh, IITians can get together and say, okay, you know, we're not talking about huge sum of money. We're talking about about 150,000, which is any one guy can write a check for 150,000. It's not a big deal. And this will allow our team to make a concerted case on one book at a time. Then we want to get these books translated to Hindi. We want to have a price of 100 rupees or 90 rupees per copy and subsidize and uh, give them away in large numbers to create an outcry. I mean, Indians need to know this. 
on a very large scale. All the tech people need to know this. All the engineering colleges need to know about this. And every Indian who's coming to this country needs to know this is a problem we're going to face. This is a rebuttal to the response from our side. That's the kind of toolkit. We've been talking about why isn't there a toolkit that we are creating. If there's a big toolkit, we're creating little ones. And we need help. Well, um, the reason, that's all he needs. Rajaji needs some uh, committed amount of cash. Plus, also access to them. When these books are done, that you, your own DEI departments, all of them have these books. So that they can readily reckon and see. And I want advice. I'm here. I want advice wherever you are a CEO or your manager. I mean, you're inviting our opposition. They're going around training your HR department. You could call us and say, okay, we, you know, we're not biased towards either side. We want to hear both sides. Yes. And we have one side has been shouting and coming and doing all this. We want to hear the other side. And then everybody can decide for themselves. I am available. Vijay is available, my co-author. We're willing to come back. And if you invite us, that's the second thing you could do. Invite us. You could also hold gatherings of IIT. We're trying very hard to create an IIT event, IIT event here. And by IIT, I mean engineering people in general. Bring them together and let's talk about what's happening in their organizations, like a town hall meeting, and what we can do with them. So there is so much that you guys who are successful in the Bay Area should be doing for us. And, and this, is, this is actually going to help you. Because if you want to start the next startup company, you don't want all these false things, you know, putting a cloud on your productivity. That is the whole point. Uh, sir, I was grinning from year to year when you started mentioning cars. Because you see all these dog year things. These are the preparation that I have for you. Everything is in the same chapter on the class. So we're going to take this up in the next episode. At this point of time, I would like you to like, share and subscribe to our channel and don't forget to click on the bell button for notification and also please consider donating to Rajiv Manotaji's Infinity Foundation. I'll put the links in the description section so you can easily go there and click on it. We really, really need to uh, help Rajivji with this effort. Um, you can watch all the videos that have taken place as uh, in connection with this book that Rajivji has released. He had a stunning, spellbounding speech on Sunday that, that I had the uh, honor of attending. And uh, there, there are so many things that come out. One question will trigger a new thought. So anyway, so please, please support him in this. And, and I'll do what little I can say. Like you, I'm not an IIT either. Otherwise, I would have done my little bit to try and get these uh, friends of ours to listen to us. Because this is something that concerns all of us. So more on cast, its implications, its research, it's stunning. And I'm going to share some of the questions from this in part two. So do watch the part two also. Thank you very much. Namaskar.